Today's topic is templating engines. We'll talk a little bit about what they are and see examples from two popular frameworks templating engines, which are Laravel's Blade and Symfony's Twig. We'll also install and configure a twig towards the end of the lesson, so make sure to stick around. So what is a template? Think of a template like your view files with placeholders. This HTML file, for example, can be a template. We can load this through PHP script and replace this placeholder with content. It separates the app code from the presentation code. Now, in the context of MVC, the views are what separate the presentation from the app code. So views are essentially templates in a way. As you might remember, we built a very simple view rendering earlier in this series, which allows us to render views from controllers, where views can contain some variables or placeholders that get replaced by actual content or values that we pass from the controllers. For example, we have this invoice controller here which has an index method which listens on the slash invoices route and it simply renders some kind of index view file from the invoices directory and it passes down list of invoices. If we open that index.php view file which is a PHP template, we see that we are looping over the invoices if we have some invoices and then we're displaying some information for each invoice. If there are no invoices, then we're simply displaying no invoices found message. So this itself can be considered as a template. We can reuse this template and pass down different set of invoices and get relatively different content. Templating engine is what processes or parses the templates combining it with the data model to return the final content, which is kind of what's happening here. Data model is being combined with the template and the final content is shown on the screen. So if we open the browser and visit the invoices page, we get this nice table displayed on the screen. So this means that PHP itself is a templating engine in a way. It's totally fine to use PHP templates and PHP as your templating engine. However, it lacks some features that are provided by other third-party templating engines. So let's talk about some of those features and benefits that come with using different templating engines like Twig or Blade. For starters, you can have a dedicated front-end developer or a designer who does not need to know a lot of PHP and still be able to work on the front-end part of the application because typically templates contain very minimal to no PHP code at all, depending on the templating engine that you choose. It's arguably easier to maintain and read such templates due to its cleaner and less verbose syntax. Most templating engines come with built-in security like variable escaping to avoid XSS vulnerabilities, unlike vanilla PHP templates where you would have to make sure you escape output properly. It also makes building layouts and themes much easier by providing template inheritance and so on. Providing additional features don't come without a cost. Such templating engines usually add some type of overhead because extra processing is needed like parsing and compiling, though most templating engines keep this overhead at minimum. Another downside is that you will need to learn somewhat different syntax than you're used to if you've been using PHP templates, though most of these templating engines provide great documentation and there are lots of tutorials available so you should not have any problems finding content and learning the templating engine that you choose. You're free to choose any templating engine that you like, there are plenty of them available, but we're going to talk about the two popular templating engines used by two popular PHP frameworks called Blade by Laravel and Twig by Symfony. Let's see how this PHP template example would look like using Laravel Blade. So let's open the blade template.blade.php and note the extension here blade templates use.blade.php extension. Now, as you can see, this already looks similar to the PHP template that we have here, but it does have some differences and it has some additional features. For example, we have this for else loop here, which basically loops over the invoices. And if there are no invoices, we can have this empty clause here where we can display some default message when the invoices array is empty. This syntax, for example, right here echoes out the invoice number and it also escapes the output protecting you from XSS vulnerabilities. Laravel Blade offers a lot of useful directives. You can extend layouts, you can include files, can access the loop variable within the loops, you can do if and switch statements, conditional classes, can build components, and can even run raw PHP because unlike Twig, Blade does not restrict you from using the plain PHP in your templates. Now let's see the same 
same example with the twig now. Let's open the twig template dot twig and notice the extension here. Twig templates typically use dot twig extension. As you can see, Twig does not use any PHP at all. We are looping over the invoices using this syntax and we're printing data out in a similar way as Blade. In addition to just being able to print the data, we can also apply some filters and execute some functions by adding this pipe character followed by the filter or the function. Format currency, for example, is a filter offered by an extension. Date is also a filter here, but there is also a date function available, but this date filter just formats the date to a given format. And finally, if the date is empty, then we print NA. Otherwise, we print the formatted date. Just like Blade Directives, Twig has a bunch of useful tags, filters, and functions. It's pretty simple to install Twig and use it without Symfony Framework. So what we're going to do is that we're going to install the twig and configure it for this app and then we'll replace this view rendering here with twig. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to copy this table and we'll replace this table in index.php and we'll actually rename this index.php with index.twig. Then we can close this out and of course this is not going to work now because we don't have the twig installed. So let's open the terminal and let's composer require twig twig. Then let's head to twig documentation, scroll down a little bit and we'll click twig for developers and we'll copy this little snippet of code to initialize and configure twig. Basically, as stated right here, Twig uses a central environment object that loads templates. It says here that most apps create a single environment object when app is initialized and use that object. So we'll basically initialize this within our app class and make it so that it's a single object. So let's open the code. We'll close this terminal. Let's open app. Dot PHP and within the boot method this is where we can paste in the code that we copied so we'll paste it here we'll import these classes and we need to replace the path to the templates and path to cache so we'll replace this with views path because we have the view path constant and we'll replace this with storage path slash cache now we need to have this twig environment object available in our controllers. We can do that by binding this twig object to container so that we can inject in our constructors in the controllers. So we'll do this container and instead of bind we'll do singleton because we only need a single instance and we'll bind the environment class and we'll simply return the twig object. Now let's open the invoice controller and we're going to create a constructor here and let's inject the twig environment and instead of returning the view here we'll simply render the twig template which if we inspect the render method we see that it first loads the template and then renders the template by passing down the context which are variables. So we'll render index dot twig we just need to change the return type to string because render returns string now we could have a custom twig class instead of injecting the environment here we could do something like twig service or maybe twig or maybe just view to make it a little bit more clear that it's a twig that we're injecting Right now it kind of is not clear we're injecting some kind of environment class so we have to look at the import statement to see that it's from twig. We could of course alias this as twig and do it this way but you might want to create your own class and then wrap the environment within that class and then bind that class in your container or even use interface if you want to go a bit further. But we're not going to do that here we're just going to keep it as environment and we'll just alias it to twig. Now let's open the browser and let's test this out. We're going to refresh the page and we're getting an exception stating that format currency filter is unknown. The reason we're getting this error is because, as I mentioned before, some filters require extensions to be installed. We're going to install that extension in a minute, but let's remove the format currency for now so that we can see Twig working as expected. Let's refresh the page and sure enough, everything loads and twig is working as expected. Let's say that we wanted to change something. Let's say that we wanted to add 
a dollar sign here let's refresh and we see that it's not being changed that's because when twig templates are compiled to php they're actually being cached so that it doesn't have to recompile on every single request which improves the performance however when developing we don't want to manually delete this cache so if we open the project here and open the storage this is the cache directory that we put in our app.php right here so if we delete this then it's going to take effect so if we delete this from here and refresh the page we see that it was recompiled and we have the dollar sign if we remove the dollar sign from here and refresh the page we see that it's not being removed from here again because it's being cached so when developing we might not want to keep on doing that we might not want to delete it every single time so there are a few things we can do one is that we can either enable the debug mode or we can simply set the auto reload to true which will automatically reload or recompile templates whenever the source code changes so if we go back to the browser and refresh the page we see that now it's gone now let's go back to the documentation so that we can see how we can install that currency format extension within the filters here we'll find the format currency and then if we scroll down a bit it tells us what extension we need to install so we'll take this open the terminal install it and also we need to add this extension to our environment object so we'll take this and put it within our app.php right here let's import this extension let's go back to the index.twig bring back the format currency let's open the browser and refresh the page in this case it's stating that some sort of date formatter class is not found you may or may not get this error on your environment depending if the internationalization PHP extension is installed and enabled or not. So if we open the PHP documentation, we see that it's an internationalization extension. So in some cases, this might already be bundled and installed and you might just need to enable it yourself. So if you're using something like XAMPP, what you can do is you can try going in your PHP INI and uncomment it by removing the semicolon and then restart the web server and then see if that gets rid of the error. If you're using Docker like me, then you might have to install the ICU library and then install and enable the internationalization extension so we're going to go back to the code let's open the docker file and within the install commands we're going to install the icu library and then we're also going to configure internationalization extension and we also need to install the same extension and so we can add that right after pdo mysql now let's open the terminal let's exit from our container and then we can simply do docker compose up dash d dash dash build to rebuild the containers let's close the terminal let's open the browser refresh the page and sure enough we're back to normal and everything is working and the dollar sign is automatically added because now the value is formatted using currency formatter filter so this is it for this video i'll leave the rest up to you to check the documentation of the templating engine that you choose to work with whether it's blade twig or something else this lesson should be good enough to get you started thanks a lot for watching smash the like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so it really helps me make more videos like this so thanks again and i'll see you next time